Okay, I think you, go, you can all hear me. So uh, thanks everyone, welcome to this uh, panel. And uh, the, the title of this panel is Behind the State of the Stack. Um, and this is actually kind of leveraging a talk that Randy's bias has been giving at past summits. And we'll be giving a version of for this summit coming up uh, later in the week. Wednesday. Wednesday at Wednesday. five. It's just before five, I think. Four fifty. I'm 450. looking it up right now. Okay. So th that so Randy can always we'll, can talk a little bit more about that later. But so this is really a kind of playing off of that and talking about based on the things he's found about what the state of OpenStack is today. Uh, to branching that off with some qu uh, questions that we have for this group of panelists to talk about. Uh, uh, where they see OpenStack today, what we can do together right, as a community, make OpenStack a better solution and a better project. So uh, a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, 5.20 p.m. 5.20 p.m. 5.20 right. p.m. Wednesday. Right. So make sure you go to that. So a uh, couple of housekeeping things. If you have an empty seat next to you, could you raise your hand? Okay. If you're not, if you're not from EMC. <laughs> We have a seat. Such a relief. <laughs> <laughs> you have a seat. So Might good. be best, Brian. Okay. okay. Right. Well, fill, if you are from EMC, you can fill in the seats now. I guess that sounds like there's enough room. Uh, second thing is, um, I encourage you to stay for the whole thing. Not only, be, obviously, not primarily because you're going to hear some great things from our panelists, but also we are raffling off a surf, uh, Surface Pro three. Is it three now? At, um, well, so we'll be giving that away at the end of the panel discussion. I think that's the first usable one too, right? So <laughs> yes, that's what I heard. The internet may not work on it this week, but. So what we'll further do? Why don't we just uh, let's? I want to go ahead and let the uh, panel introduce themselves. So uh, to start, uh, my name is Ken Hoy. I'm, I'll be moderating this session, and I'm with EMC's Cloud Solutions team. Uh, I'm Randy Bias. Hey, my name is Mohammad Khalid. I work for the Cloud Solutions team at EMC. I'm Brian Gallagher, responsible for cloud management at EMC. I'm Jeff Olson, part of our Global Services Cloud Portfolio Group, responsible for creating OpenStack-related professional services. Uh, my name is Raghavan Srinivas. I go by RAGS. Uh, I work in uh, a small group in EMC called EMC Code, and the idea is to work with open source developers within the company, outside the company. Uh, I've been doing application development for a long time. Great. Thanks, everyone. All right, so what I'm going to do is I, I have some questions I'm going to uh, give to the panel that they can uh, discuss among themselves. And then after that, there will be some time. Uh, there's a microphone, as you can see, in the aisle over here to my left. Um, and we'll have some time for audience questions. And then we'll wrap up with the raffling with the Surface Pro. So uh, to begin with, obviously, since we are at the OpenStack Summit, uh, the first question I wanted to throw out to the panelists is, is uh, to date, with this killer release, what do you see ha has been the greatest improvements of OpenStack from Juno to Kilo? Who's going to take that? It's all going to be you, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going to be me. I, so I, I, I don't pay that level of attention. I mean, I, okay. just being so, honest, I don't, I, I don't have time to go install OpenStack or manage it. I mean, those days are very far behind me. Okay. The last time I dealt with OpenStack hands-on, I was deploying uh, Diablo for AT&T in uh, summer of 2010. 11. Okay, so how about what, what uh, just in terms of the can history can, of the I project? Can. Okay, sorry. So, what I've seen, I think, is the usability. Um, I, I think some of the great additions has been the Murano project um, by adding that to self service catalog feature. Uh, it, re it really is going towards uh, allowing not just developers, not just very advanced technical people to be able to manage OpenStack and, and run OpenStack, but your everyday users. So. You know, I think that's, that's something that is, a, is almost a necessary um, evolution of the way that the, the cloud platform and, and also other enterprise systems are going. So uh, I'm really excited about that, that being added to the OpenStack uh, core project, and uh, I'd like to see where that's going in the future. I'd also add uh, Ironic. I think that's been a good uh, addition as far as the program's uh, concerned, uh, dealing with the hardware substrates and making it uh, a lot easier to deploy. Uh, I think that's where a lot of the improvements will come in terms of automation, reducing variability, making things much, much more stable. Yeah, um, can I add, Ken? Um, you know, I hate to be on the panel and just say ditto, you know, but, but I think Please I'm don't. a big fan of uh, 
of Murano as well. Um, and, um, you know, I think I was at the summit last uh, year in Paris. And, uh, you know, the sum of the discussion was that, you know, infrastructure as a service is kind of boring to developers. And I think Murano has made it a little bit more boring in the sense that it will just work or, you know, um, so uh, I, think, I think Murano is cool and it makes it applica uh, application development a lot easier. You know, that's one of the big things about Kilo, in my opinion anyway, um, that, that I think is going to make a difference. Yeah, just to add actually, um, as I've been following OpenStack, you know, for the past, past four releases, you can see it's more operationally focused. You're looking more at the operator. You're looking more at the user. Things like triple O, things like Oslo, things like Rally to test those templates. Those kind of things definitely help IT operators. Uh, and and basically, those, that's kind of a classic improvement I've seen. Is it's becoming more operationally focused too. So uh, we're on the leveraged release now, right, of OpenStack. I, I think most people who've been working at it for some time would agree it's more usable <laughs> than it was obviously some year, several years ago. But there's still a lot of users who say it's really difficult to deploy and to manage OpenStack on a day-to-day -day basis. So, um, so t what do you think are the biggest challenges that's holding back, uh, allowing people to manage and uh, deploy an OpenStack uh, in a simple manner? So there's, there's two elements to this. Uh, the first is expectations, right? Um, if you're going to deploy like an alternative solution like CloudStack, um, you're just deploying compute, essentially. Right, I mean, OpenStack is much more ambitious. The minute you start putting compute and storage and networking and authentication and application deployment and management, all those things together, you're gonna, you get a, um, you know, a exponential rise in the complexity of the overall system. So one of the problems is just people have an expectation that they're gonna go take OpenStack, download it, sprinkle it in their data center, and poof, there's Amazon. Um, except it's just not that easy, right? Um, and then the second piece is that, and I'm gonna talk about this a lot more on Wednesday, is that, um, we are just unwilling as a community to actually, um, you know, um, kill certain projects that are causing a lot of grief. So last week, it was a little bit late, but I did an informal survey. I got about 70 responses, and it was very obvious that there were a couple of projects, I'm not going to tell you which, you can find out on Wednesday, that people just universally hated. Why aren't those re-architected? Why aren't they rebuilt? If people hate them and they're hard to operate and they increase the complexity of the system, why aren't they just kicked to the curb? Well, the reason is is that we like feel that every little piece of code in OpenStack land is precious, um, which is not how well-run companies actually do things. So we need to figure we need to figure that out. So it's expectations not set in the right way. It's complex to build and operate a private cloud, combined with you know us being unwilling to make hard decisions about some of the components. And I, I think that some people don't have a, a real use case for leveraging OpenStack. You know, they look at it as a free alternative to some of the commercial versions of virtualization Put out there. Put Platform 2 apps on it, for example, sure. on SAP on sure. OpenStack. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's this new shiny bumper that, that people are excited about uh, for, for many different reasons, but they're not, they don't really understand, well, you know, we have to kind of develop a specific use case of why we would leverage OpenStack. And, you know, I, I think that's at least some of the conversations I've been having um, with, with people is, well, it's not production ready. And, well, why is it not production ready? Is it not production ready because you're trying to leverage I, it for platform two apps in a general purpose cloud yeah, environment? Yeah, it's bullshit. I ran walmart.com <laughs> on Black Friday on OpenStack and it freaking worked, right. right? It's production ready. It just depends on the vendor, the deployment, and the use case. Right. So can you talk a little bit more about, so what, what, when you say workloads that are appropriate for OpenStack, what, uh, what does that look like? So, let me jump in. Uh, so you t asked about what, you know, challenges or what opportunities. I've spent about six, seven months looking at the world from a different angle. I spent the prior 30 plus years in data storage, information infrastructure, product development, and um, this whole notion about workload placement, I think, is, is critical for this audience and, and this discussion. And when you look at brokering of workloads, there's not a lot of information that's offered up from the infrastructure stack to the brokering services, if you will. So if you look out today, what can you get out of a, a cloud, uh, out of an IaaS cloud? Transactions per hour, cost per unit of CPU hour, or cost of gigabytes per storage, uh, of storage per month. And that's not a lot, you know, because a lot of IT departments worry about, hey, is my application workload predictable? 
you know, can I meet my recovery time objective? What about backup? People think, hey, you know, I stuck it in this IaaS cloud and it just, all, all the data's there, right? I don't have to worry about that stuff. So I spoke at the Cloud Foundry Summit last week and one of the, uh, right, uh, the encouragements I had is let's work with the OpenStack community so that we can get more of a service catalog exposed upward so that we can broker applications in a much more systematic manner. Right now, people are, are deploying to different types of cloud, whether it be Amazon, whether it be a, 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 a vSphere environment, whether it be OpenStack or other, and they're finding out that not all their business objectives are being met. So can we start to surface some things up that can do a better a job of workload placement, you know, to make sure that their, their uh, GRC policies are met and others are met? So uh, in my experience, there's been two major causes of failures for OpenStack deployments. First is trying to put plat Platform 2 apps on it and not understanding that it's a different system. And then the second is um, going direct to the ODMs to get white box hardware and not understanding that that means that you need a hardware certification and validation team, which you probably don't have, um, to make sure like the firmware sa stays stable across all the different boxes you have. Um, and so on the on the platform or on the platform two versus platform three, for people who don't get that, it's like existing enterprise applications are pets, not cattle, right? They don't manage themselves. You know, if they get sick or they start to have problems, everybody's got to be on deck to go fix them, right? Everybody gets that SAP, SharePoint, blah blah blah, right? Well, if you go and you stick those on a platform three cloud, like OpenStack is generally designed to be, the problem is is that suddenly, like you know, you're running on two, two and a half, nine cloud, like Amazon. Right, and those apps are suddenly two, two and a half, nine apps because the infrastructure goes down on them and they can't react. Right, if you take platform three apps and you go stick them on a platform two cloud, then that works initially because you can go stick a scale up system on a on a on a scale up system. But the problem is, is that the cost basis is very, very high, so it's very expensive to run those apps. So the only people I've seen that be successful have two clouds. They've got one for platform two and they've got one for platform three. And OpenStack plays best in platform three, even though people like to do unnatural things with it to try to shove it into platform two land. I, one of the things I see is. Um, and I don't want to put anyone in the spot here, but uh, developing applications, you, know, you talk about, well, platform two versus platform three, and what's the difference? And you know, you have Randy's pets versus cow analogy. But I'll ask someone, do you have the resiliency built into your application, or is it built to fail? And sometimes people look at me like I'm three heads, like I'm crazy, and I say, you know, worrying about high availability on the hardware side of things, I mean, really is a way of the past. I mean, obviously it has its certain use cases and whatnot, but you know, really for third platform apps, you want to build the resiliency in, and, and are you doing that while you're leveraging OpenStack? And you're just like, you know, you're crazy for saying something like that. But in actuality, that's that's way that you need to build resiliency is through your code. But Jeff, typically you've seen actually customers who actually are, like the whole shadow IT organization where developers are actually deploying an Amazon Web Services, which is kind of platform three scenarios. But there was, but if we are going to talk to the same developers and we're trying to bring them back, talk about because of security and governance of platform three apps, they should use the same principles. And that's the problem as a top-down process, right? You have to have a good enterprise cloud architect. It's just not OpenStack by itself. It's also about having a good architect, having a good team around to go ahead and help build the private cloud. Well, so I wouldn't say just it, OpenStack itself. It's more than that. It goes to the cultural issues because exactly. inside the enterprise, typically, there's a lot of fear of failure. If you go to Amazon, you fail. Like you spend some money on your That's credit card, right. right? If you go inside the enterprise and you like ask for a whole silo of hardware and then you know you fail, then it's a big problem. Everybody gets really bent out of shape. Exactly. The principles change. That's the yeah. problem, right? So. so for success in platform three and OpenStack land, what you want to do is you want to build a cloud inside and then you want to let people know that it's okay to fail. And you want exactly. them to be able to use a lot of resources yeah. and shut it down and 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 then everybody kind of wins. Exactly. So. Yeah, I think uh, Brian, if you don't mind. Um, um, you know, I know that it's not just the technology that matters, but but I think the platform definitely matters uh, in the sense that I don't think OpenStack is a is the only solution for third platform applications, right? You know, obviously really? this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. As much as we would like to think so, right? You know, we still there is there is something that's missing, you know, and that's what's on top of the infrastructure as a service, and and I think um, you know. Um, I was having a discussion with uh, with somebody who operates a pretty big uh, infrastructure, right? And and basically he was saying, um, you know, how many of you have all your source code on GitHub, you know, including, um, for example, uh, you know, your, your infrastructure code as well, right? 
you know, how many of you have everything on GitHub, for instance, right? Um, few? OK. And, and really, the, the question came down to, do we have an action plan if GitHub is down for a few minutes or whatever? And it turns out there's really nothing. So, so what you want to do is you want to have a platform that, that kind of adapts to you know, some of these, um, you know, like high availability, scalability, and all that, but, but also to be able to um, you know, insulate the developer or the operator. Right, you're talking about issues. the platform as a service layer, right? Right. Because right. your average kind of enterprise developer that, yeah, is exactly. not going to become a scale out expert overnight, so they need, they need kind of training wheels so that they can have a framework to, to go to that'll get them most of the way. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So what I'm saying is there is something on top, right? You know, and I'm kind of leading to probably the next few questions. Yeah, I, w I want to get back to the app uh, for a minute. I, if, if you paid attention to last November at the reInvent conference and what Amazon announced, you know, make no mistake, they're going after the enterprise apps, right? They started with less critical, started with small to medium business, moved up into mid enterprise. Everything in November of last year was all targeted towards enterprise customers, right? Faster compute, uh, Amazon uh, exclusive Haswell offering flash tiers. Uh, they have a database as a service now. They've got better security. They're moving up into the platform space with code deploy, uh, code pipeline, and code manage. Uh, they've got uh, Lambda messaging services that they've delivered. Yeah, you know, but, for, for enterprise but apps. That's, that's the, when you say enterprise apps, do you mean platform two? Platform no, I'm just I saying mean, workloads I mean that typically two. are you know running the business that are Yeah, but Lambda, nobody's going to run SAP off of Lambda, right? I mean, that's really a platform three kind of technology. Exactly, uh, Lambda. So for example, the enterprise apps, if we talk about the highly critical apps, they typically either go to SaaS models or they stay in-house. They don't absolutely totally. go to. So, so I think that I think where you're where you're right on is that for the dev test and QA of those platform two apps, like SA, your SAP test cluster, putting that in Amazon is like golden, right? Because suddenly you can do have multiple QA environments for very cheap, and you can parallelize instead of serialize your, your QA. System. Exactly. So let's talk, um, I think we've kind of talked quite a bit about the challenges. Let's talk a little bit about what can we do, particularly this is an EMC panel, what can EMC particularly do to help with deployment and management of clouds, whether they be infrastructure as a service, OpenStack or PaaS, whatever it may be. How, how can we help make cloud deployments easier and better? Uh, I think it's kind of piggybacking off what I mentioned before is, is really understanding, you know, if someone comes to EMC and is looking to deploy OpenStack, really understanding what their use case is. You know, peel that onion back, determine are they, are they ready to, to take that journey. Uh, in, in my experience, there, there are some. So we try to define uh, people's OpenStack journey, or, or whether they're ready, undecided, or, or motivated, and through those very different levels of, of their status, you know, we can we have different things that we can do for them. You know, if they're very advanced, they they've been they've had DevOps, they understand that the the platform or the applications they're developing for are ready to move. Um, you know, and it's a much easier process to help us allow us to enable them, versus the ones who say we need to go OpenStack. We're getting a lot of pressure from the top down for us to you know, get off our existing platform or developers are coming to us and saying we need a, a platform with common APIs to develop these net new applications. And so, but we don't really know how to do it. And we don't want to have you come in and, and drop OpenStack and hand us the keys and expect us to be able to drive it. You know, we want some sort of transformation journey. So, you know, through, um, you know, whether it's taking a look at their apps through some sort of cloud advisory or um, DevOps uh, uh, transformation, you know, that's, that's one of the things that we're doing right now in helping customers is really helping them understand how can they leverage this new technology around OpenStack for success, not just come in and, hey, we'll deploy it in five days and have a production cloud, and they come back to us and say, thanks, I have no idea what to do with this thing. Yeah, I'd, I'd just pick up on the uh, DevOps side. I think that's a key area where not just EMC, but the industry, uh, we need to come together between platform as a service and infrastructure as a service, you know, making it much more uh, automated, much more systematic, uh, easy to use. I think the other thing on that is just the, you know, kind of the intersection of the marketplace, right? We've got a marketplace around IaaS, we've got marketplace around PaaS. I think simplifying that, you know, giving customers choice of what they're deploying, you know, what types of clouds that they're deploying to. And I think automation is another uh, key area of focus. 
uh, where EMC and other, other folks in the industry can start to help. Yeah, for the automation piece, I don't know if people have been paying attention, but um, not only do we have uh, a lot of new components that are software only, like Scale.io and ECS and, and Caspi and some of the others, which is, you know, we're selling software, EMC selling software, right? Um, but we also have like virtualized versions of a lot of our stuff, like the, the virtual VNX, and uh, there's a, something coming for Isilon, I think, as well. You can run Vi Isilon. So if, if you're trying to build like automation pipelines and test your infrastructure and want to apply DevOps to your infrastructure, which is hard, um, you know, it's very different than applying to your web application. And then we're starting to like lay the groundwork with all that in EMC code so that you actually have the software tools you need to succeed at having a DevOps pipeline around the infrastructure, which uh, is pretty amazing. Yeah, just to add uh, to what everyone has said, to me it's just not about the platform, it's also about the ecosystem. So and from that aspect of it, what we are also trying to do is we're trying to partner with some of the top distributors like Mirantas, Red Hat, canonical to create some reference architecture design so that it helps people to uh, build a private open stack cloud or even down to a hybrid model because at the end of the day it's all about hybrid cloud so we're trying to m build an ecosystem to help customers uh, solve the, solve the whole supply chain cloud supply chain problems okay so uh, sorry did you have anything else okay um, so I want to uh, I have some more questions, but I want to give the audience a chance to ask questions as well. So if you have any questions for the panel, please uh, come over to the mic on to the left-hand side over here, on my left over here, uh, and ask into the microphone. That would be great. Hecklers are welcome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll go first. Uh, uh, thank you for those great insights, right? Name and company? Oh, uh, uh, Giri Baswa, Trilio Data, and XCMC. All right. <laughs> You escaped the board. <laughs> you, had to, you had to leave the room. <laughs> All right. So we talked about apps, right? So apps going everywhere. Uh, so private versus public cloud or hybrid cloud, which class of applications are better suited for what? Any thoughts? OK, I'll go. Uh, so like I said in 2009 or 2010, like you know, if you want a private cloud, it's got to look like Amazon. Like, it, what, the other thing that you've got that's like VMs on demand system with an API in front of it, like you can call that a cloud if you really want to. It's not a cloud by my standard, right? That's a virtualization 2.0 platform. Mm -hmm. And so great, have fun with that. You know, um, VMware is going to help you and it's going to make it awesome. That's good. And, but if you have a private cloud, if you want it to be a cloud, then it's going to look like Amazon, or it, it's going to taste like Amazon at the very least, right? You're designing a layer cake where each of the apps go on top of it, and you're getting leverage because you have a common set of services across everything instead of silos and, and stovepipes. And in that case, your question doesn't really make sense because you're going to take your platform three apps and you're going to put them on public, you're going to put them on private, you know, you're going to put them on a platform three cloud, regardless of where it is. And really, the question is, where do the where do the apps go with our platform two or platform three? Platform two apps on the platform two cloud, platform three apps on the platform three cloud. Yeah, I think the desire um, you know, from CIOs is it'd be great if it was all the same. You know, and I had one environment, but the reality, Randy said it earlier, P two apps and P two is different, completely different than P three. Not just at the infrastructure layer, but also at the uh, developer layer, right, or you know, the application development process. Night and day differences around the infrastructure, how it's constructed, what it can do, and how applications are built, delivered, and, and deployed. So I think, you know, it will be by, you know, obviously people don't like to have, you know, islands of isolated stuff, but I think in this transition, it will be you know, isolated, I think you, you have to ask the question, does it converge in the future? But you know, they're going we, from hundreds and thousands of islands to like two. Right, right, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that would, that's, that's pretty, pretty exactly. freaking that, great. That's beneficial, right? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think again, um, you know, if in an ideal world, um, you know, everything was the share nothing architecture that Michael Stonebreaker, you know, talked about 30 years back, right? Um, you know, then, then, you know, it's very easy to design, uh, you know, stateless apps. Uh, Brian and I were talking about stateful apps. Um, you know, how do you design stateful apps? Um, you know, it's going to be a little bit different from how you would define state, I mean, how you would design stateless apps, right? So, so the answer, you know, I hate to say is it really depends, right? But, but the idea is that I think we are coming back to what you were saying, you know, try to reduce those snowflakes as much as possible 
but you can't completely eliminate them. You know, try to minimize them. But the idea is that you know, if you can get to two clouds, I think that'll be you know a, a real cool thing. Uh, there are no two clouds, right? Absolutely. So that's why I keep ma mentioning. If you're talking from a very IT organization, come from a very IT background, is the way the CIOs do is SaaS, as and pass. That's how it works. Yeah. So highly critical apps will go SaaS, so there's no way in hell you're going to do anything because hopefully the SaaS providers are doing platform three kind of scenario, which they might, right? They might be using OpenStack. But IS and PaaS, as Randy and they were mentioning, that's again, you as an IT organization should have a governance model saying, hey, if this application is going to get matured or, or you're going to refresh it over time, how are you going to move it to a platform three? Are you going to rebuild or replace? Or for, as you were saying, if a platform two, stick to platform two, VMware works well, just leave it at that. It's just and determining do it. fit for purpose. You know, it's, it's taking a look. You might have a, a Microsoft environment, an OpenStack environment, a VMware environment, and then Rackspace, Public Cloud, Amazon. And, uh, and, and you don't know, you know where to build these net new apps, where to place them. You, you know, your VMware guys might be saying, well, our, ours is the best platform to use it on. And the OpenStack guys might be saying, well, not really if you want to scale past you know, the limitations of you know, the clusters and Amazon you know, and so on and so forth. Uh, it, it really depends. And, and you know, it's kind of a, a cop-out kind of thing to say, but yeah. it really does. And obviously, there's certain parameters that you need to go by in order to determine you know, what is really fit for purpose. It all depends on, on you know, really digging down deep into application and actually what your future state wants to be, how you're looking to scale, really measuring uh, what type of load you want to see with that app. Thank you. I think 100% of the world's credit card transactions go through mainframe still. Like, I mean, I don't know what you're expecting. Right? Most of the securities clearing is still done on mainframes Yeah. across the globe. Okay, next. Thank, thank you. Between uh, platform three hardware and platform two hardware, um, the idea of uh, having five nines applications running on two nines hardware. And Are you looking uh, at me? Looking at you. I didn't know that. <laughs> and then earlier you mentioned uh, <laughs> the idea that uh, going an enterprise going to uh, unvalidated hardware white box white label is probably not an option. Where is the line drawn? It's uh, an so option. You just have to realize what you're getting into. Yeah, so I'd, I'd say the, a couple other things, not just the. You know the, the the propensity towards commodity, but it's what the what the infrastructure actually does, right? As it relates to resiliency, managing resiliency and availability is typically done by the infrastructure and in platform two today. Platform three, it's completely different. So I can yeah. get the two nines uh, EMC hardware. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, we're we're not working actually towards actually seven dude. nines. I'm <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, it depends on, you know, and it's also the, the model of access, right? I, I, I don't think it's black and white, but, you know, Platform 2 typically have been block and filed. There's much more object so, access. In, in so on Project Caspian, it's two, two and a half, nine hardware. It's COTS hardware that will deliver with it. Um, but it's running software like Scale.io, which is a distributed block store like Ceph that is going to get you know four or five nines of, of up, uptime for the box storage but service. Th that's what I'm looking for is that there is some sort of uh, discrimination well, you between. You need uptime. I mean, I don't <laughs> think anybody argues about that. <laughs> yeah, just to add, somewhere. <laughs> to, to add some stats for the audience, so we've done a lot of cuts of the market data, and by 2018, and we looked at it, uh, platform two, platform three, or platform three to platform two. So, platform three by 2018, the overall app environment. Um, as it relates to storage, is about a $32 billion market, right? Whereas Platform 2 is three times that in 2018, so $96 billion, right? But the Still growth... impressive it got that, that far, that, yeah. it's going to get that far that fast. And, and in, in Platform... But the growth is all in, in Platform 3, right? It's double-digit, it's like mid-teens, whereas uh, Platform 2 is about you know, low single digit in terms of growth. And the other interesting thing is when we cut it this way, instead of, you know, platform three, platform two, we cut it this way in terms of on-prem, off-prem public, or somebody asked the question about hybrid, it's about a third, a third, a third, right? And so a third being traditional enterprise IT, you know, still platform three is being delivered on traditional, you know, kind of P2 architectures, if you will. So a third of that. A third is being deployed across a hard, uh, hybrid cloud, and a third is being deployed into uh, public cloud environments. Yeah, and our exabyte scale customers, we don't have very many, nobody does yet, but we're starting to see them. They're all the web scale guys, right? It's all platform three. So I'm just kind of curious. I've been around OpenStack for quite a while now, and you guys are still talking. Name and company? What's that? 
Name and company? John Griffith. I work oh, for, John. I'm yeah, working sorry. OpenStack. Oh, no, we're going to get the solid fire. Spring. No, Come on, actually, bring it, baby. Nothing about, nothing, about, nothing about storage at all, actually. Ah. <laughs> but the thing I am kind of interested about is you guys are really perpetuating the, oh, you can't use OpenStack for anything except for stateless and what you guys are calling mm, platform no. three. Okay. Platform 3 well, is not stateless. Well, no, I actually, I believe it was you who mentioned you want to run your stateless apps in OpenStack and et cetera, That's, et cetera. And, and Randy, you said, you know, oh, you wouldn't want to run SAP or something like that. Correct. Why not? Would you run virtual desktop? Yeah, I, I think not? the answer is based on time, right? You know, right now, if you look at the pass layer, what does is, what is Cloud Foundry do well? As an example of a pass, I, I, it deploys, you know, 12 yeah, factor apps. Sure, right? that, that's great, right? Uh, so okay. over time, that may change, right? I think there's a strong desire for that to change. I, I guess what I'm saying is, I think it has changed, and I'm just kind of curious, you know, if, if you guys, apparently you don't agree, or maybe you do, or hey, yeah, it's I don't, close, I, or I it's don't not. agree, John. I mean, the thing is, is like, uh, you know, I, ha I don't know one customer that's been successful doing that. I know customers that have thrown enough bodies at the problem. Like I was just talking to one of the world's largest credit card processors, and they they move their P th their P2 apps onto OpenStack, and it's not going well, and they're not happy about it, and they're trying to figure out what their next move is. So, but for us to have this discussion, first of all, it would take way longer than we've got right now, <laughs> uh, and beer. second of all, you know, it's going to get very technical very fast. The reality is, is that if you look at P2 applications, though, their expectations are different. They operate in the world of the network has infinite bandwidth and zero, zero millisecond latency yep. and infinite IOPS and infinite capacity. They have no ability to deal with, you know, failures in the underlying infrastructure. And I've just seen this over and over and over again. And even if you can start to wrap DevOps around some of this stuff, which is very hard because like a, create an, or, an empty Oracle database takes 30 minutes. MySQL takes half a second, right? Even if you can wrap DevOps around it, like the expectations of people coming into that land are always like really out of balance. They're like, where's my live migration? I need to know that when the SAP master whatever falls down that it like automatically cycles to the next box. And, and, and so the, the expectations that like folks like VMware have set around the P2 apps, it, it's just gonna, they're not gonna get it when they come to OpenStack unless they do you know, OpenStack plus VMware, which, you know, whatever, let's not go there, right? No, let's not, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right, is there any more questions? We have time for one more. No? Wait. Yeah, one more. Can you come to the middle? Yeah. Sure. Or yell really loud? Shout it out. <laughs> so uh, Jason Wicker with Marantis, also XEMC, and VMware for that matter. Um, <laughs> so uh, you guys kind of danced around it, and um, you know, I've heard this a lot, and especially just recently coming, coming into the OpenStack world, that it's not ready for production. And then at the same time, I've heard Randy and I heard Walmart present earlier today, very much so ready for production, yes. right? Absolutely. So would you guys say that that's really not OpenStack, more that it's the company and their internal ability and their partner's ability to be ready? So, so the distinction I made was experience that I had talking to people where it's that comparison with, with Microsoft, VMware, and OpenStack. And out of those situations, it's, it's, they're trying to make an apples to apples comparison more so around general purpose, like we want compute storage and networking for all different types of workloads. Where you look at Walmart, or you look at some of the other uh, big customers or big reference points where they're might using it for Swift, for, for block object storage, or they might be using it for neutron networking, for software defined networking in a production environment. So when I, when I say that, that you know, some people are saying, well, it's not production ready. I don't feel that. I definitely feel it's production ready. I think there's certain situations or use cases where it may not be quite there yet, but in cases like Walmart Labs, I mean, obviously, it's, it's clearly in production. Sure. And, you know, Mirantis obviously has a lot of references to back up that, you know, they've done production-ready uh, deployment. So, you know, I, yeah, I, I think it's, I think that. I think, Jeff, more, more what he was mentioning was it's more project-to-project -project basis, for example, e-commerce. Yeah. But again, you're absolutely right. It's also about people and process. If your people and process are not there, you can go move. It'll still, still be in the innovation and never move to production. So it's, again, people process, got around. The, the number one thing that drives me crazy, because I, th I think you already know the answer to your question, right? You've got to work with a vendor or, and or build the expertise inside. Right? It's like asking, is the Linux kernel production ready? I, no. You've got to go compile it and configure it and do stuff with it before you've got an OS, right? But the other thing is, is that um, I find that customers have no idea how the hell scale works. They're like, oh, I've got OpenStack running on five servers on that Netgear hub over there, five laptops. Let's scale it up. 
okay, well, what does the switch fabric look like when you get to five, six, ten racks? They don't know. They scale up to one rack and then they get to the next one and it starts turning into a shit show pretty quickly. And so that's the thing I was saying earlier about the complexity in private cloud, like, you know, storage and networking and service, none of that stuff's free. You can't go sprinkle software and magically it all manages itself. I mean, this shit is hard. You gotta work on it, right? And either your vendor's doing a bunch of the heavy lifting for you or you're gonna figure it out yourself. I lost a deal for Symantec, I don't know if they're in here, and, the, and, and I was annoyed because I was like, look, you guys are gonna have to do this, 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 and this. And they're like, ah, no, it'll be easy. Nine months later, I went back and they're like, Randy, you were right, we had to do this. <laughs> I'm like, you rebuilt my product internally. Why did you do that? Why didn't you just take my product? So a lot of it's in about expectations and workloads as Absolutely. well, right? It's what are we gonna do with yeah. it? It's not a generic tool to go everywhere. That just comes back to the case of, you know, it's that nice shiny bumper and they're just like, hey, I've been hearing all this stuff about OpenStack and I can hear I can scale. They don't know the difference between horizontal versus vertical, and they, great, here, we'll deploy it in five days, and they say, okay, I don't know how to use this now because it's API driven, and I'm more of a bottom up type of scale organization. I, I still don't get those five days, man. I worked in an IT organization. You can't do shit in, I'm sorry, you can't do things in five days. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> who, who says that, man? It's, it's, yeah, there you go. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it will, it, will be sit, it will be sitting in innovation lab for a long time if you don't have the people and the process and the integration for the second day, second day operations, right? Without the second day, without your CMDM integration, what's going to happen? Those so three those over there, they yeah, can I, set up 22 I, racks for Walmart in three weeks time, including user acceptance testing and all of the burn in and multiple reloads of the software. Three weeks time, 22 racks. Yeah. Good job. So, uh, you know, I've been in the technology industry for a long time, you know, a lot of gray hair and all that. And, um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of customers look at, you know, uh, many of these technologies as like a silver bullet. And, and really, it's, it's not. And, and I think it's wrong to say that it's production ready. It's wrong to say it's not production ready either. You know, I think it really depends on kind of the workload you're looking for. I think I, I'm kind of agreeing with you. I'm kind of agreeing with them. And I'm disagreeing with them as well. Okay, you know, right. So it, it kind of <laughs> so, so on that note, um, our time is up. So um, first of all, I want to thank the panel for sharing their uh, with us. Um, and we also want to thank uh, all of you for uh, listening in thanks, and Ken. some of you for asking questions. So before you go, we're going to go ahead and raffle off this Thanks to John Griffith, Griffith for throwing rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so, Oh, we're raffling now. Do you want to have Randy do it? Oh, shit, I get to do it. Wow, yeah, sweet. No work, no work okay, who wants to pad my pocket? <laughs> I can pick this up, like, I'm certain of it. Uh. 348839. Oh. All right. Woo. I think he works for EMC. Fantastic. Hey, that's a setup. <laughs> okay, so thanks, everyone. Um, again, I encourage you to go to Randy's talk. Stay at the stack Wednesday at 4.50. And um, 5 also 20. the 5.20, sorry. 5.20. 520. 520. And then the EMC booth uh, will be open tonight, starting tonight, P13, I think. That was Brian Chong. Yes, one moment. <laughs>